In 1846, if one had to find one hospital that represented all that was known about medicine at this time, it would be the great general hospital at Vienna. Built in the 1780s by the Emperor Franz Josef, it was largely a charity institution with 4,000 beds and departments for all known complaints. There were a few private patients, particularly maternity cases, who came in to avoid a scandal. The maternity, or lying-in hospital as it was called, was the largest in Europe. But most patients in these wards were poor and in return for free treatment were used as teaching material. For here was the greatest medical school in the world, a school which pioneered the idea of teaching both at the bedside and in the dissecting room. Students came from all over the world to study under doctors who rightly believed that where they led, the rest of the world followed. In the next case, uh, cholera, the body heat is much greater. By cooling uh, the patient, we hope to counteract the progress of the fever. So ice is put to melt in the mouth in order to lower the temperature of the internal organs. At the same time, by wrapping the limbs in wet blankets, the exterior of the body can be similarly cooled. The treatment of disease as a collection of symptoms, as expounded by Professor von Hildenbrandt, was based on principles that hadn't changed much since the ancient Greeks. Not surprisingly, half the patients died. In the operating theatres, as many as nine out of ten would die, sometimes from shock, since there were no anaesthetics, more often from septicemia, since no one knew anything about infection. But changes were coming. Although to most surgeons a blood-stained coat was no more significant than a grease-stained overall is to a mechanic, and although they saw no connection at all between the blood poisoning that killed their patients and the fact that instruments were only cursorily washed, if at all, some radical new thinking was taking place. Since 1840, the professor of pathology had been Karl von Rokitansky. In the course of his career, he'd dissected over 30,000 corpses, examining and reporting on every diseased organ he found. It was he who paved the way for the notable advance that was about to be made at this hospital.